opportunity to serve your state. And let's face it, most of life are not those big moments like marriage and death and birth of a kid or 9-11 in the same way that most of the year is not Christmas and Thanksgiving. I mean, most of life is kind of more slow and steady. Uh, and, but as Andy said, the slow and steady of operating this department is amazingly important and is amazingly difficult. So just doing your job solidly each day is a tremendous contribution to the state of Vermont. Uh, but there may be an opportunity to serve in, in a greater capacity. Sometimes things will come up. We had a situation at Chittenden, what was it, 10 days ago or so, where we had an offender who was hanging himself. Um, somebody tries every six days within the Department of Corrections, and it's, it gets a lot of focus from us and from others. And out in the community, every six days, somebody does it and kills himself. So that's, that's a challenge that we face. The staff at uh, Chittenden did exactly what we asked them to do, exactly what we trained them to do. They were doing on 15 minute checks and instead of having it be a predictable 15 minutes, 15 minutes more that the offender could harm themselves during that time, the staff there did what we asked of them and interrupted the cadence. And so the fact that that person is living today is because of that staff member doing what they were trained to do. Um, there's uh, opportunities to keep each other safe. Uh, we're on, we've embarked on a tremendous, under the leadership of, of Bob, a tremendous effort to radically ramp up the level of, of uh, preparedness for the security and safety of our facilities. In the same way that nobody quite anticipated 9-11, we have to think about what we're not, you know, what isn't right obvious. We can't react to the last crisis. We have to prepare for the next one that we may, might not otherwise be on anyone's uh, radar screen. I've said to legislators across the street, and I've said to reporters, in four or five years of my involvement with the Department of Corrections, none, none of them have ever once asked me about safety and security in our prisons. But you could bet, if something goes wrong, people will be all over that. So it's our job to be on top of that ahead of time, and, it, and it's the job that you're signing on for. So with the case of Chittenden, we were happy to see the staff praised by a mother who thanked them for saving their son's life. I've had the pleasure of both thanking uh, one night down at uh, Marble Valley uh, visiting with the correctional officer who cut somebody down and saved them. And the offender that assist came, you know, rose to the occasion and assisted her in that preservation of life. And one of the things I said to her is like, for all I've done in my career, I can't say I've ever saved anybody's life. I mean, you, in my speaking to her, you can say, you saved this guy's life. That's tremendous. How many people can say that in their lives? So, um, you know, I, I was up at Northern for the graduation a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to one of the offenders there that was from New York and telling him where I worked and, and where I went to school. And the person said to me, like, what are you doing at a job like this? I would have thought you would have done better with your career. <laughs> and, and I said to the person, hey, wait a second. This is a pretty important job. Um, but all kidding aside, I feel like, you know, while some yardsticks in my career, somebody may say the work in the corporate world was the most, you know, was more important than this. But I absolutely, positively believe that my five years now, more or less, of involvement with the Department of Corrections is the most important thing I have done in my life. Certainly, the most pr important thing in my professional life. But the most important thing I think I've done in my life, but for being, a, you know, trying to be a, a good father. So this, you, you've embarked, you've joined an organization that's tremendously important. Um, there are, you know, one person in the room here, um, you know, just thinking of the day-to-day -day things that you are, are going to do that c can have a pronounced impact on society. There's somebody in the room here that was involved in the DNA collection that busted open a, a unsolved murder from 15 years ago. A, a, a young woman was murdered up in Stowe. Uh, and the Department of Correction was, was involved in collecting that DNA. And that case was solved. Uh, and that killer was brought to justice and was not able to kill someone else. And so 
the identification of, gee, this person needs to have their DNA collected, and actually doing it may seem mundane and unimportant. But there's a situation where a murderer is off the streets and will serve the rest of his life in prison because of, uh, in part, because of the, the contributions of our staff. Um, you have the opportunity to interdict a weapon or um, drugs that could harm someone in, in a facility. You'll have the what might seem like the mundane task of keeping track of your keys, keeping track of tools that are used in, uh, you know, to repair things, uh, kitchen knives. And again, that could seem like some bure boring bureaucratic task. But at the same time that no one anticipated 9-11, I mean, if, if we're not on top of that stuff, very, very bad things could happen. So again, the, the importance, the, you know, the correctional officer is the backbone of the organization. Um, so while you're upholding rules for offenders, um, I think there's also the opportunity and the necessity to be fair to offenders. Um, you're, in the same way that our uh, co-workers and neighbors are going to go and represent America overseas for better or worse. And in, most, in the overwhelming majority of cases, uh, they represent our nation well. Um, you're going to represent society to these offenders for the time they're lo locked up. And so I'd encourage you to be firm and consistent and fair, uh, but encouraging. 95% um, of the people will come back to the communities with our families. And you're gonna, you can have a, an impact, and people do. I talk to offenders, and they often will reference a staff member that either supported them when they were down, encouraged them to get their high school diploma, encouraged them to stick with their uh, treatment for addiction, uh, and, and in many cases, turn their lives around. And we won't have 100% success rate, but you'll have the ability to uh, certainly con contribute. So as we discussed yesterday, I mean, hopefully this will be a mutually beneficial arrangement. You have a, a, get a good job with eventually good benefits if you don't have them at the outset. Um, better job security than most places. Nothing's totally certain in today's society, but better than most places. Um, and so I think hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. Um, and for those of you that display integrity and competence, hard work, um, there's, as you can see, the audience is riddled with people that have uh, risen through the ranks of this department. It's also riddled with people that are amazingly competent and do a, a great job uh, behind the scenes to, to keep our communities safe. Um, and, and it's good to see a lot of them today. So um, I, I'm glad you're on the team. I'm proud of the people in the audience and our other coworkers. Uh, make us proud. Make your families proud. Make yourselves proud. So. I'll just conclude by saying welcome.